Welcome to Grr It Happens. To know him is to love him. He's a CEO, entrepreneur, outlier, overcomer, storyteller, visionary, victor, mentor, father, brother, underdog. Oh, let's not forget doctor. <laughs> and my husband. That's right. This is Glenn Stearns and Mindy Stearns. And this is Grr It Happens. Hey, how you doing, honey? Oh, fine. I just saw you this morning. I know, huh? It's been a while. <laughs> you been poor while. thing. You poor thing. That's right. I'm busy. Yeah, Very you busy. are busy. I, can we just laugh about the butt face dial that you just got on your phone? So Glenn just got a butt. I call it a butt face dial because oh. it was a butt dial, but it was a FaceTime from the former vice president. He's very busy also. <laughs> busy people talk to busy people. Yeah, no, you know, you know he, he he got a new phone. He's got lots of gadgets. For, for some reason, your phone was at the top of the list and his My butt phone is at the top it. of all world leaders. Right, you you should know that you by wish. now. My of goodness. You know, but honestly, that man helped save my life, as you know. That's true. You know? That is true. He connected you to a doctor in Washington, D.C., who was the one who found his tongue cancer and it wasn't just a, it was an immediate connection we got in right away because you were supposed to fly out of the country and That's thankfully right. they made some room for you and you know what sometimes you it is about who you know. It is about and it's who you very, know. And that's opportunity. That's that right. It presents itself. And hey, I think we're going to talk about that today. We actually. are. We're going to talk about opportunity knocks, dear. It does. Sometimes it knocks really loud. Sometimes it's a silent little tap. Sometimes the doorbell keeps going. And do you answer it or not? That's and what right. happens when you don't? And what happens when you do? You know, that's the whole thing about a lot of people that have said, like, how can I get my business off the ground? Why am I the one that always has a gray, dark cloud over my, you know, life? Why, you know, and it's it's really what people don't understand is we all have the exact same luck, right? And it's not luck. It's about jumping through the window when the opportunity opens. It's about people being able to realize that in the darkest of times, there can be the greatest of opportunities and they just have to know when to jump and when to take advantage of it well i think that goes um i think a lot of times people are scared and they don't they just feel like it's going to be scary but what's this so scary about saying yes and then seeing what happens i always like if you don't take a net the answer is always going to be no if you don't ask if you don't reach out if you don't try the answer will always be no and the ending will always be the same right so that's why i think you know again People are asking for the secrets, and it's really no secret, right? It's just you can't allow um, your fear to paralyze you. Mm -hmm. And when we, you know, little things. Let's let's let's. I'll start with businesses that you and I have happened to come on, and we'll work our way up. But you know, the other day we were in uh, Oregon with your family, and we had a couple hours because our daughter was going through her little um, school, what do you call it? Oh, um, FaceTime. FaceTime school. And so we Zoom, were like, what do you yeah. want to do? So we walked by, we saw that massage place. There was nobody in there. And the lady was nailing stuff she on the wall. Hanging stuff on the wall. And we said, hey, do you have time for a couple of massages? Well, I'm kind of busy right now. No, you I know? don't have room. I'm booked. I'm like, there's nobody in there. Maybe someone was coming in a few minutes, but oh. hey, what about, hey, I can give you a 10 minute chair massage. You want, that'll be like 30 bucks. I mean, money in the pocket. I have been versus nothing to haircutting places, restaurants, and these people. I think sometimes you want to appear busy. Mm -hmm. So you say, oh, you know, I, I, I'm too busy right now. And then you go to other people. You look at some of these nail salons and stuff. Come in. Let me fit you in. We'll fit They're you in. They're totally busy. Yeah. Every chair is booked. Hey, but they're like, yeah, yeah, we have time. Down. Sit down. Yeah, sit down. We'll be with you in a minute, right? They and make, You have to make room. So it's about opportunity. And if somebody's there willing to pay, you find the opportunity and you, you make it happen. And you know, go back to restaurants. I mean, I've been in a couple restaurants where you go and you're like, hey, do you have any tables? And there's not a single table. No, we're booked tonight because they have reservations all coming. But I'm thinking... Don't you think that maybe this one person you could feed them and then have all those tables open, switch it around, and then maybe they'll be gone before right. your other? Like, it just, nobody shows up on time. Well, you hope they do, but it's pretty right. rare. So we go to Kyoto, No, Now, if you've never been to Japan, if you ever go to Kyoto, Japan, there is a restaurant on this little walk, old walkway with the cobblestone called Yoshida's Steakhouse. I have never had more mouth-watering, buttery, delicious steak 
in my life. That's right. Now, what happened, if you recall, is it was five o'clock. They unlocked the door, and we were standing there. And I walk in. I said, "We'd like to have a, uh, a seat at your restaurant." Well, sir, we're being booked for three months. I said, "Well, nobody's here right now." Well, they're coming. Well, we'll we'll be quick. Be fast. You know. And he, the man thought about it for a minute. He was going to say no, and then he said, "Come on in and sit down." And we did. We had a wonderful, wonderful dinner. There were five of us. That was like a big group. That's a lot of mouths. And we were in and out. But the point is, they got an extra sale, and we got to experience the best steak we've ever had. But that's like, you know, people don't, you know, we've always, my whole life, people, how do you have so many experiences? Well, it's because you say yes to life. You say yes to business. You say, yes, I'll figure it out. And that's what you need to do. And, and you know, and, and yet there's so many people in the world that think they just have bad luck. And it's because they don't yeah, so jump at the opportunities. Don't you, don't you think there are some people that just walk around with a dark cloud? Do they make that cloud? Absolutely. 100%. Mm-hmm. People are responsible for their own success and failure. So 100%. if you say, I just have bad luck. No, you don't. You create it. The more you, like, how do you do that then? Explain to someone, how do I create better luck, better opportunities? Is it an attitude? Is it a thought process? Is it, you know, putting yourself in the right place, saying yes? Is it all those things? All of the above, my goodness. You know, when I think about starting out, you know, I was in a, in a position where nobody knew my name, no one knew my company, and all I did is say, yes, 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 I'll make it happen. 1 a.m., I'll go take your loan application. 6 a.m., I'll be ready for you when you get off of work. Whatever it took, we were there. I showed up. That's the first step, right? And so a lot of people, again, are like, you know, you work weekends. I work whenever people need me to be there, right? And that's how you become successful. And yeah, yes, I don't think clocking up at five or, I mean, there is thing about work-life balance. I understand that. But the people that are going to succeed are the ones that don't look at the clock yeah. as a measure of what their workday, you know, contributions are or see right. their effectiveness in the day. Well, example again. So we had our daughter that's in Africa as we speak. She was going to go uh to some you know f- service learning uh, place and we said why don't you hit Africa gosh it's so far I don't know if I want to go there so after she kind of says yes um, she's ready to go reluctantly she, uh, reluctantly she's then nervous because you know it's gonna be two three weeks away from my friends no you're gonna be out having experiences you're gonna see new things and then all of a sudden that pepperdine, opportunity came up hey there's been 3,000 kids that want to go to this 280 are going to be picked to be a part of this leadership conference when is it well it's the four days leading up to you going to Africa I can't go why I want to be with my friends but this is an opportunity that thousands of people want like how many times have you said no to an opportunity then later gone why didn't I just say yes? That would have been so cool. Right. Or you convince yourself the reason why you said yes. Oh, I wouldn't have liked it anyway. Like, it's amazing what we can talk ourselves exactly. into. But what happened then she... Well, obviously, we, we talk her into going, I'm only staying until Tuesday morning. It's Sunday. I'll stay till Tuesday. And then she has to fly out 4 a.m. We had to take her to LAX Thursday. on Thursday. She goes. I get that text. And it says, Dad, I'm so sorry that I doubted you. This is an opportunity of a lifetime. I am so grateful that I am here. And she said, thank you for pushing me. Sometimes I, someone else needs to, sometimes you need to listen to the people around you that know you the best, that don't, that aren't consumed by your fears. Other people are not consumed by your fears. And sometimes they can help you see through that in a way you may not recognize. And, and you know, I said, if you recall, hey, we're your parents. Do you think we're going to push you into a situation that's going to make you miserable? You know, so obviously she takes advantage of that. She says this. Remember on the way home, crying. This was life changing. I don't want to leave early. She stayed until midnight midnight Thursday morning. And so she had no sleep and flew all the way to Africa, which is perfect. You know, I mean, that's how you just squeeze every little drop of life Mm -hmm. out of out of living. And um, 
And now she's in Africa doing the exact same things, having a wonderful time. And, and you know, uh, the feedback has been amazing. I mean, there's people out there that don't think they want success. They don't want ex- like They just were, are settle for how life is. And, you know, and if you're that person, that you're that person. You're going to have a very predictable life. But if you're someone who wants more, every time you say yes is the opportunity to open a door to something you may never have known would have existed. Never have known what was on the other side. Like, I went to Oprah, and if I hadn't uh, done my noises, I wasn't going to. I was, I was broke. I was nervous, and my mom was like, "Who knows me best? That's right. Make a sound." And that changed my life. Like when a door, and when opportunity knocks, open the door and well, walk through. That's the whole point, right? With with Brooke going to Pepperdine, she's then able to meet the 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 chancellors daughter she's able to connect with people that can help her get into colleges you go to oprah you're able to meet oprah which got you from a dental hygienist into a radio job into tv into entertainment tonight and ktla and movies and all this stuff and so it's not just so much about the connection it's about the people that you meet along the way you would not have ever met oprah had you not barked and clucked and crowed you know, and it's exactly the same thing with, with Brooke. Just the other day, no, last night, uh, they they asked us if we'd host an event at our home, and it's some very influential people are going to be there. We just said yes. We didn't even like uh, calendars open. I have no idea what it's going right. to entail, but and and that can help as well with just connections, you know. And so I'll tell a story though. When when I first got the opportunity to get into television, I was working in radio at a, at a small station, and we were doing very well. So I was very comfortable. I was making good money. I had a good job. We were number one. And I got an opportunity that was scary because it meant it was temporary. It was only a two-month opportunity to go fill in on a TV station in Portland. And I, the news director was giving me opportunity. And my mom was, this is so exciting. And so were my family. But the news director at the station manager and them, they didn't want to lose me. They were more concerned, obviously, about their own success, which I understand. Right. But they discourage me. Don't take this opportunity right now. You wait, wait. Till another opportunity will come along for you. They didn't want to lose me. They didn't have me under contract. I said opportunity no. Opportunity knocked. I said no initially. I said no initially. And my mom, who knows me best, who will be the one who's your biggest advocate, is the person who knows you best, called and said, you are miss- You're cr- what are you, crazy? You are missing a great opportunity. You don't know what this will turn into. You don't understand the doors it could open for That's you. Right. So I went back and I said is the offer still open? Thankfully, the manager, station manager said yes. And the people that I work for were not happy at all, of course. And they, a couple of them were not very friendly. Well, and you're just going to get that. basement that. people, again, people that want you to be down there with them in the darkness versus people that want to pull you well, up to the light. And, you know? and I wouldn't say they were basement people in the sense that they were, they were more concerned about their own success, which I understand. And they didn't want to lose someone who was a very big right. part of it. And, you know, since then there's been a, we've made amends and there's a great support now because we've all moved beyond that. But sometimes people in their own fear of how, how is this going to shake up my life? They will turn on you. And, you know, you want people that are going to encourage your growth. That goes back to surrounding yourself with the, the, ba- the balcony right. people. Right. Absolutely. You know, I think about, about opportunity. I think about what happened in 2007 and eight with our business. And this goes to all the people out there that are um, in business and thinking, you know, that when you get into something and you grow over time and you get bigger and bigger and stronger and stronger and and then you you know have a happier ever after life it doesn't work that way right and you go and grow and then you fall and fail and then you grow again and fa- that's that's real business it's up it's down but in the business i chose lending it's very cyclical where you will just Boom and then burn. bust. <laughs> boom and bust. Exactly. Boom and burn and bust. Right. And um, in 2007 and eight, we were under. We were, you know, hundred million dollars of buyback loans, class action lawsuits, 
people coming at us, the Department of Corporations wanting, I mean, so many things happening. We lost 85% of our volume, and it was a crazy, insane time. You lived it with me. I'm sure was. Just closing down all the offices, everything. Well, when that, a couple of my competitors went under, and there were great people that I could never have gotten before. They were the sales leaders. They were the the operational leaders. And we went for it. And people said, what are you doing? I said, well, we're going to open these offices. I thought you were crazy. The, the offices Even your that president just and your CFO at the time were well, like, no, well, they were protecting you, They were us. protecting. They're like, you can walk away and we'll support you. Right. You know, they were a little nervous about your decision. Yeah. But. And but I, as I said then... There will never be an opportunity like this ever again for us. And we went from this tiny, tiny lender. We did $19 million in September of business. In 2007. Fast forward a few years after we took that chance, we did $26 billion, right? So it's, it's crazy what can happen when you fight against the crowd, when you go against you know, what uh, your fear tells you, and you go for it. Why do you think you're that person? Do you think you were born that way? Did that materialize as a child? Was there something that happened to you when you were younger? Were you yes. always like this? I, something happened to me when I was younger. Um, when bad things happen, that doesn't mean it's the end of your business, the end of your life. It is part of your life and part of your business. So if you change your mindset from... This is something that's going to destroy me to this is was bound to happen. We were going to stub our toe. The, the market was going to change. We were going to have horrible, you know, horrible sales cycles or whatever the case may be. And you look at it as part of the journey, not the end of the road. If you can take that and put that in your mind, then it's about problem solving. That's all it is, right? So when I was a kid and I had a baby at 14, I thought it was the end of my life. Became a great, great, wonderful lesson that, wow, I've got this daughter. You could know, be good. Could be bad. Could be good. It could be bad. It's your favorite story. It is. And you think about that story, you know, where you look at that that Chinese farmer who lost all his horses and the, the village comes his best horse ran away it could be good it could be bad they were like oh no you lost your best horse and then what a few weeks later a few days later he came back with a whole herd of horses and they're like wow how wonderful you have all these horses he's like could be good could be bad then his son rides one of the wild horses that they're trying to tame he falls off and breaks his leg wow we're so sorry your son broke his leg he's like could, could be, be good, good. Could, could be, be bad, bad. So when the military came around to recruit for the ongoing war, he wasn't drafted because he was injured. Could be good, could be bad. Exactly. So let me tell you something. So a real life version of that happened to us last month. And think if you remember this. So my wife and I went to Morocco and I hired a private uh, guide. And oh, so yes. we went to this mosque and there like was the second largest, second largest in, the in the world. In Casablanca. Right. Group. And it has this large mall, this area that, and so he gets out of the truck and we had not, you know, that's the first time we got to see him out of the vehicle and his leg is bent all the way. Remember his, his ankle was ankle. turned under. He was literally walking on the s on his side bone of his ankle. And so. hobbling. And I said to him, I said, you know, if you went to United States, I mean, you could have that fixed in no time. And I said, matter of fact, I'll help you if you'd like. And he said, you know, I'm used to it now, and, and, and it's okay. I, I'm, I'm fine with it. He said, what happened is when I was five years old, I broke my ankle, and I would lived in a little village where my parents and everybody in the village were illiterate. So we were so poor when I broke it, we couldn't fix it. And so it stayed like that. Healed that way. And when I was seven, eight, and everyone played sports and everything, I had to just sit there because I couldn't. So he says, I started to read. I started to learn and go into books. No one in my village knew how to read and write. And he says, if you recall, that he ended up going to school, getting 
you know, all the other kids went to work in the field, remember? Mm-hmm. And they stayed illiterate. Yeah. They stayed there. So he learned, he, he taught himself five, five languages. languages. He ended up going into the big city. He ends up getting a house. He ends up having a job as a guide. And now he can guide in five different languages. He's very valuable now. Exactly. That one was could all have been good. All because he could broke bad. his ankle. And he became this. And I think outcast. he gets bigger tips too, because I felt so bad that he was. Why he walked so far? He, he was wonderful. Exactly. So it, that's how. If you if we look at life like that, it could be good. It could be bad. And we don't just think, you know, that it's going to ruin our lives. Then you're going to be okay. You're going to find opportunity. But when you... Well, it leaves your mind open for the possibility of whatever it would be, good or bad. Right. I mean, I think if you just say, oh, this is terrible. Oh, this is well, terrible. You, you don't even leave your yourself. mind. Oh, yeah, you don't even... You don't even see opportunity, mm-hmm. right? Your eyes are gen- closed, your ears are closed, and it, and it becomes something bad. I think about 2007 and eight and how we got through that and became you know, the largest wholesale lender in the country, one of the largest lenders in the country. And then we go at it again, right? Here we are with Kind Lending. We open up in the best market ever, ever. 2020 was in and one. Everybody was is telling us, it's 2020. Everybody is telling us, you just have the best luck of all. Best timing. Best timing. <laughs> could be good, could be bad. And that's what I would, I would sit there and go, yeah, yeah. But in the back of my mind, I'm going, if I had the best timing, we'd have been open four years earlier and yeah. had a lot of momentum to take advantage of this and be, but that's okay, yes. And then what happens? It turns and now <laughs> it has been the worst market. Oh, God. As bad as 2007 and eight is, and yet, I mean, all these companies that went public, all these companies that made literally billions of dollars are suffering right now. They're just all laying off, dismantling their companies. And here we are, a little guy. A little engine that could. A little guy that didn't make the kind of money they did because we weren't a big guy. And now we sit here. But you didn't go public. You weren't beholden to any We don't have distractions. Investors. We don't have people breathing down our neck like investors and shareholders. We're focused on mortgage banking. And what's happened? We've had our best month in a year and a half. Okay? When everybody else is having troubles. And what's that mean? We're over here having a little party, having fun. And really, you can feel our energy, right? It's positive. Yeah. In a time when everybody else is 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 really scared and nervous and what's going to happen and we have to break down these great, you know, production offices and things that we've had. And so all these other great producers see our positive energy and they're all coming. We want to be a part of that culture. And so when I think about people that are out there, you know, with their own companies, small companies, and you think, I wish I was this, I wish it was that. Your time will come. Every dog has its day. Yeah, that's okay? a good point. And you, you, know, you can think of any great company. And in our business, it was countrywide. That was the biggest, mm. the biggest. They were on every corner. They're not, they're, they're gone. Completely. Right? Everybody has its time. And you think about actors, right? They are the greatest actor or rock singers. You know, and now you look at them, 40 years later and they're haggard and no one knows who they are. You know what I mean? And, and some of them, the happy ones, they never took it too serious mm-hmm. as far as their fame didn't let it go to their head, you know, and the well, miserable look at ones, Will Smith. Like th- that, that really hurt him then. I'm, it could be good, could be bad. But I mean, look at people like Tom Hanks, who's still going strong. I mean, yeah, they're they're grateful for their lot in life, and they they're doing well. You know, he's just fell from grace. Let's see what how this turns out. We'll see. That's right. So, that's right. No, I think that you know, again, you know, business, life, it's all your mindset, right? And if you are, you know, I I once said this that you know you take money and it does not enhance your life. It absolutely, um, all it does magnifies. is magnifies your life, right? Well, it magnifies your character. Right. I think. That's what I'm saying, you know, because if you're a good person, then money will help you become 
maybe better. better at philanthropy, giving back, and you continue. If you are a miserable person, all it does is you start complaining. Everybody wants me for my money. You know, it's and I've watched these people going the lottery winners. Yeah, all oh, I've had a lot of lottery winners come to me and ask me for help. You know, and the first thing I've always said is, you tell people no. Everybody, no, but you don't understand my family. They say they've been with me. They need a, a loan. Tell them you're going to lock the money away for a year because too many people are coming to you and you're not saying yes to anyone. And they have a hard time. And then all of a sudden, you know, you end up in a place of regret and whatnot. But um, but anyway, our, our, our topic about opportunity knocking is really about a mindset. It's about people realizing that you need to jump when the time is there. So you can't make every single opportunity. You have to just grab it when it comes. You know, and you've got big, huge, you know, shifts in in people's thoughts. Who would have thought that the, the government would have put trillions of dollars into the economy? Mm -hmm. That opens up opportunities for people, right? You know, from well, the we'll others, Jenna, we were talking about the other day about who made the shakes that you know was he he created them because he'd had cancer, so he had <sighs> some shakes he created. Went down in the basement at a trade show the whole three days. There was nobody there, and a gentleman walked up the last day, like tried it, loved it, tasted it, said this is really great. Can you produce enough to supply two hundred stores? And he just sat there like uh, he could have said no, but he said. Yeah, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. That happened to be the Whole Foods manager or the buyer for Whole Foods, and he, he changed his life. He just sold that. it for a billion dollars. Yeah. I mean, there you go. that was a situation where you could be like, no, I, I don't think I can do that. I don't know if I can, you know, even uh, Richard Branson, you know, when they talked about the, tr was it the a railway or a shipyard? He said, yes, let's make it happen. Or your friend Ty, who created DocuTy, he's like, Yes, I can do it. Right. And then we'll figure it out. Say yes and then figure it out. And, Get to work, and they didn't have out. anything at the time. Nothing. Both of them just said yes and they and then they left and they said, "Holy crap, what am I going to do now?" You know? <laughs> and so, but that's a place to be and and as one of my uh, you know, uh, philosophies or whatever you call it, little glenisms thing is about, you know, find your buyer first, right? Mm -hmm. Then figure it out. I used to do that with the government contracts. You know, we would go out with these contracts and I put together the resumes of everybody I would hire in Maryland or Florida and go out and present that to the government. And then they wouldn't get back to me for six months, eight months, who knows how long. And finally they go, okay, we're gonna give you the contract, right? And then I'd go back to these people and half of them had other jobs now. Half of, you know, and then you're like, if I just said, Look, I don't have the people. The answer was, I have the people today. I don't know if they're going to be there in six months. Then you got to go scramble and find six, you know, more people later. And but that always got me the contract. I figured it out later. You know, so life's like that. I you think. know, I think that also goes. It sounds it's saying yes, and and it goes back to something I learned in improv, and it was the killer of improv comedy is no, the word no. Because when you deny someone's storyline, you kill it and it goes nowhere. So the term in improv is always yes and. And you'll see that in whose line is it anyway. It's saying yes and then let's continue the story. You create the next story. When you say yes, it allows a new story to be written. When you say no, it shuts the book. So just I, I think your, your life story will be written beautifully the more you say yes to opportunity. And. Yes, and. There you go. Yes, and. <laughs> there you go. Yes, and. Anyway, so this might be a great opportunity to wrap this up. I think this has been a great, a great discussion on opportunity knocking and answering the door and walking through it. And, you know, yeah. when the door knocks, open it. Go through it. Open it or create your own damn door. Build your own door. I like that. Yeah. So, you know, and, and again, and and. And a lot of this comes from people that are out there going, you know, how do I get started? How do I take advantage of, you know, a certain market? And it's all about saying yes. Mm -hmm. So I hope you guys get that through your heads 
And that is don't say no. <laughs> say yes to life. Say yes to business. And figure it out later because that will always work out. There's always enough. If you're wanting to get something done, what do you do? You give it to a busy person. That's what People that say. say yes. That's right. Anyway, dear. All right. Well, thank you for joining us for another episode of, say it with me, Grid, Grid Happens. Happens. You can follow us on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube and catch us wherever you get your social media and like us and follow and uh, share the news with your friends. So we'll talk to you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.